Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight at 10. I'm Brooke Buckner here with Nick Lutrell and meteorologist Simone Thomas. Now, Nick, I want to start with you. Can we revisit oh, yeah. what happened last oh, night? Yeah. The Hogs defeated Tennessee oh, at home in Fayetteville. We saw it live on Hog Zone. It was awesome. Oh, it, it was incredible. I mean, what a win for the Razorbacks, mm -hmm. defeating a top top five team in Tennessee. Fans rushed the field. We, it was insane. We did our Hog chaos. Zone show. Yeah. It was live. It was awesome. It was live television. It, yep. was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. The hogs are coming in hot and yeah. so was the weather this weekend. It was a hot one for October. What's it, up with that? It definitely was. I think we've been referring to it as hot Tober yes. this weekend. We've been seeing highs That's in the fitting. 90s today. Here's what we got across the state. 93 was the high both in the capital city and Palm Bluff. Hot Springs of Russellville getting up to 94. Camden to our south got all the way up to 95. Now that high of 93 today puts us at 85 days this year where we've seen a high of 90 degrees or above still fall falling short of what we saw this at this point in October. Since October 6th, we had seen 100 days in 2023. Well, tomorrow, definitely looking to feel a lot better. We actually have a cold front that will be moving through overnight, so we'll still keep up the sunny trend tomorrow, but we're going to see more of those temperatures staying closer to average. We still can't squeeze out any rain in the forecast, but at least things will feel a little more like October. I have that seven day outlook coming up in just a few, so make sure you stick around. All right, thanks, Simone. And with no rain coming, we'll continue to see the fire danger go up. Multiple counties are currently under burn bans this evening. Even if you aren't under a burn ban yet, the dry conditions could still put you at risk. Although there's not one in Pulaski County, North Little Rock Fire Captain Gary Williams says it could happen if we don't get some rain. So we try to keep our eyes on those things. Sometimes people try to burn and, and clear the yard or what have you, and it tends to get away from them. Friday, North Little Rock firefighters put out a residential fire on a deck and the dry conditions could be to blame. William says this is a reminder to not let your guard down and always have a safety plan. Robert Murphy with the Arkansas Department of Agriculture says the state's drought monitor is increasing. Right now, more than 70% of the state is either abnormally dry or in a severe drought, but he says that's not uncommon this time of year. Rainfall totals and and what months we get our rain in, generally September and October, even into the first couple of weeks of November, are, are usually a pretty dry period of time for us. Murphy says low humidity and high winds could rekindle any embers and restart a fire, so he encourages you to be extra cautious. Developing right now, officials are investigating a shooting that happened at the Walmart in Bryant. According to police, it happened just before 8 this evening when Bryant officers were called to the scene after shots were allegedly fired at Walmart employees who were standing outside. Police say no injuries were reported and the people involved were located down the road from the store. While information is still limited at this time, officials say those involved are now in custody. And after being closed for the majority of the weekend, I-30 westbound is now back open. You're taking a live look there at the bridge on your screen. The full weekend closure of I-30 westbound through Little Rock and North Little Rock finished up earlier than expected. It's the first of three phases to get the new I-30 River Bridge back open. RDOT is asking everyone to be careful and to pay special attention to the new traffic pattern. Today, dogs got a chance to take a dip in the pool during the Little Rock Animal Village Doggy Paddle Day. THV 11's Maya Ellison got in on the action this afternoon. Maya, what more can you tell us about the annual event? Well, Brooke, today's Doggy Paddle Day was so much more than fun in the sun and a way to stay cool in the midst of the heat. It was a way to raise awareness towards what the Little Rock Animal Village is all about and what they're doing to assist dogs in need. Flashing into the fall, the Friends of Animal Village hosted its annual pool party for furry friends and humans to enjoy. Doggy Paddle Day is a fundraiser that looks to shine a light on what it means to provide better lives for animals in the community. The Little Rock Animal Village, as the city animal shelter, takes in three to 4,000 animals a year. And they're not just taking them in, they're trying to adopt them out. Each year, the Little Rock Animal Village takes in thousands of pets looking for forever homes. Through Sunday's proceeds, the fundraiser was a way to assist in treatment, providing extra support for dogs in need. And that money helps with things like heartworm treatment, spaying and neutering, um, providing you know additional supplies and things that are a little bit 
uh, above the basics. And even assisting with facility upgrades in an effort to help tackle overcrowding issues. An issue that many people are facing not just here in Arkansas, but around the country as well. Added a lot of facility needs, like a dedicated room for volunteers, a dog grooming station, um, things that really help add to their capabilities as they care for thousands of animals a year. Through the Animal Village's mission of increasing adoptions, pet parents like Greg Fundler are living proof that you can't change a dog's past, but you can rewrite his future through the love of adoption. For Greg, he knew that coming to Sunday's event was an opportunity to give his beloved furry companions an experience of a lifetime. It only happens once or twice a year when uh, the different places close down their pools. And it's very important for me to take her in particular because it's so exciting for her. And uh, it's, you know, she's only going to get so many of these in her life. In Little Rock, Maya Ellison, THV 11 News. THV 11 is your election central and we're getting you ready to cast your ballot. Starting Monday, we're hearing from the candidates hoping to represent our state in Washington, D.C. You can watch Arkansas PBS congressional debates on THV 11 plus. It's our free streaming app available on Apple TV, Roku and Amazon Fire devices. With that app, you'll be able to watch the debates live and on demand when they wrap up. Things kick off in District 2 as incumbent French Hill faces his Democratic challenger, Marcus Jones. And tomorrow is the last day to register to vote, and we here at THV 11 have everything you need to know in one spot. You can just text the word vote to 501-376-1111, and we'll send a link to our voter guide straight to your phone. Former President Donald Trump is on the campaign trail in Wisconsin this weekend for the eighth time so far during his bid for the White House, while Vice President Kamala Harris speaks to 60 minutes in a presidential election special. Natalie Brand has more as we're now less than a month away from the 2024 presidential election. Former President Donald Trump focused his election efforts on Wisconsin Sunday, a battleground state he narrowly lost to President Biden in 2020. We're a nation in decline. We're a nation in distress. And we're going to get it fixed very quickly. It's going to be the greatest win in the history of our country. I believe that. Sunday's rally marks Trump's fourth visit to Wisconsin in a little over a week. I think it just shows how important Wisconsin is to Trump. Among those in the crowd, loyal supporters and even a Democrat who says she already voted for Vice President Kamala Harris but wanted to see a Trump event in person. I like to, you know, see things firsthand. Um, I don't want to just take what I hear on social media and go with it. Vice President Harris is off the trail Sunday, but launches a media blitz this week, which includes an interview with 60 Minutes and an election special airing Monday night. In a clip released Sunday, Harris spoke about U.S.-Israeli relations as the Jewish state fights on multiple fronts. Do we have a, a, a real close ally in Prime Minister Netanyahu? I think... With all due respect, the better question is, do we have an important alliance between the American people and the Israeli people? And the answer to that question is yes. With Election Day now just 30 days away, southeastern states hit hard by Hurricane Helene are working to make sure voting can go on as normal. I think that North Carolina will be prepared to make sure that everybody who wants to vote will have access to the ballot and vote before Election Day or on Election Day. North Carolina Senator Tom Tillis told Face the Nation that state lawmakers plan to take action this week to address the situation. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Meanwhile, Monday marks one year since the Hamas-led terrorist attacks on Israel. The war, which began when Hamas invaded Israel, killing 1,200 people and taking 250 others hostage a year ago, has spread across the Middle East and put Israel on the brink of war with Iran. And developing right now, hospital officials in Gaza say an Israeli strike on a mosque and a school killed at least 25 people overnight. The Israeli military claims that what they called a Hamas command and control center was in in the compound. At least five more people were killed in other strikes on Saturday. And tonight, Tales from the Crypt at the Mount Holly Cemetery. A closer look at Arkansas's most entertaining history lesson next. Simone. Well, a cold front moving through overnight is going to give us a bit of a chilly start to your Monday. Wouldn't hurt to have a light jacket as you head to the bus stop. By tomorrow afternoon, highs in the upper 70s to lower 80s. A nice contrast from this weekend. I'll have your seven-day outlook right after this break.